boring Canva images are killing your content. I'm going to show you how to fix it live. You're going to watch me turn a real life story into a high converting post using Canva and ChatGPT really fast, really easy, and actually good. The reason why your Canva content is getting ignored is because everything looks the same. If you're not standing out, you're blending in. It is too polished. It looks too corporate. People want personality, not perfection. And if your content doesn't have hooks or value or even just a reason to care, it's made for you, not your audience. Here's what the algorithms actually do like. So they want native content that's designed to feel like it actually belongs on the platforms. Again, if it looks like it belongs in a Canva presentation, it probably doesn't belong here. They want story-based messy, real life stuff. They want to hear the stuff that's like, oh, I totally botched my first client call. Here's what I learned. Real over perfect. Document all the behind the scenes and not just the highlight reel. Also have that first frame hook that makes people stop in their scroll. Like so you're saying something like this almost ruined my business or don't post another carousel until you read this. Make it bold and loaded with curiosity and emotional and make posts that provoke comments, saves and shares, not just likes. So when you're asking like hot take questions, hey, unpopular popular opinion. Canva is killing your engagement. Agree or not? Or create mini guides that people want to save. And I think this is one of the most important things a lot of people miss is your message needs to be more friend to friend tone than lecturing professor. So you're saying something like, here's what I did that actually worked. Maybe it'll help you too. Instead of you must follow these three steps to increase engagement. So as you're watching this, why don't you take out your phone right now? Let's go to Instagram, go to your niche, like type in the search bar, whether it's like wellness or real estate or coaches and look at the top posts under a few relevant hashtags. Okay, and then what I want you to do is save three, five, 10 posts that made you stop scrolling. To be a good content creator, you have to be a good content consumer. We wanna analyze and observe our own behavior. Did that make me wanna keep reading? Or did it make me wanna click away because I was bored? Well, if I was bored, what would have made it better so that I can install this into my future content? So analyze what was the hook? How was the story told? What did they do visually? And if you're using Canva to make something that looks like a LinkedIn resume template, please don't. This is an Instagram account I just came across and it's, Look at this, like you scroll for a while and she's even, she's posting the same thing. And this might've been done in Canva, clearly has zero likes. There's no actual personality to this. She's kind of just like, throwing spaghetti up here and it's not working. Here's another page that I actually don't think is bad, but I wanna point out that if all they were doing was posting just these like sale posts without actually showing the people, like here's this girl that she is demonstrating her using it. Here's this girl looking in the mirror with a, a powerful quote next to it. This is doing pretty well at actually showing the personality behind the posts. If this was the content 90% of the time, people would easily click away, but they're, they're doing a good job of having a variety where you still can have the canvas designed images, but also some personality. Like I love this, does running away from Mondays count as cardio? And look at the comments. Yes, people resonate with this, they love it. So if we're gonna go over to Canva right now to create some high performing content, before you even think about what the content is gonna be, start with the hook. Write it first, even before you open up Canva. Now what we're gonna do, I'm gonna share my screen and let's make a piece of content. And if you're the kind of person that you're like banging your head against the wall, you're like, well, what kind of content do I even create? We have this cute little thing called ChatGPT to help us ideate it. Now when I'm ideating content, some of my favorite Favorite ways to do that is look at what's actually on my calendar. What have I actually been experiencing instead of having to go out and think about what to create? Recently, I had a coaching call. Okay, what happened on that coaching call? What was a topic that came up? Ooh, actually a topic that came up was talking about scroll bars on VSL funnels or on webinar funnels. And just for context, this is what I talked about with my clients on that coaching call that then I repurposed into a story. And now I'm gonna turn it into a carousel. So watch this for context, then you'll see how we're gonna put this together as a carousel. I've like gotten into arguments with people <laughs> over this because I was like, hey, could you add the scrub bar to your video so that I can watch it and that I have the option to two exit? And this person was like, no, cause I want people to like really watch it. And I'm like, well, I won't watch it right. because I don't have it there. I don't know how much longer I have to watch. I'm like, is it four minutes? Is it 20? And then I'm like more focused on the time than actually watching. So I always would put that and the ability to two X. And we actually got into a funny kind of rant about it that if if I took the transcription from that coaching call and plugged it into ChatGPT and said, can you take this part and turn it into a carousel post? Then I would go over to ChatGPT and create that. I can also just ideate and say, hey, I wanna reach my audience, has this problem. What are like five hooks that can help them overcome that? So let's actually do both as an example right now. When I have a coaching call, I just like go into Otter. Otter is a great transcription software and I would upload the recording to there. I actually already did because I do this to ideate content quite frequently. 
So look at this, I have meeting where I talked about scrub bars and you can use any kind of transcription software, even just speak right into ChatGPT. That's another way that I like to just talk to it and ideate. So if I click export, it's gonna export as a PDF, uh, continue to export. Then I'm gonna go back over to ChatGPT and all I do is drag and drop that PDF into ChatGPT. So watch this. Now, typically I like to talk to ChatGPT because I feel like I can get more ideas flowing instead of typing. The time that it takes for my brain to reach my fingers and actually <laughs> get the words out, there's like a, a disconnect. In my mind, I hear the internet dial up like <laughs> So I'm gonna talk to it and I'm gonna say, hey, in this coaching call transcript, my clients and I had a really funny kind of rant conversation about if people should put scroll bars on their replays or not have them to make them sit through it. I think this would be a hot topic that people can get heated about and want to share their opinion. So can you help me come up with five hooks and then turn it into captions to put on a five to 10 carousel Instagram post. We wanna make sure that the first post is definitely something that's gonna catch their attention so that they'll scroll through the rest of the carousel. Also leave them with the opportunity to comment below with their opinions in the comments so that this post gets a lot of engagement. Okay, so see what I did there? I just talked to ChatGPT and told it exactly what I want. I want a post that has a great hook at the beginning. I want this post to keep people intrigued all the way through. And I want it to make the audience want to share their opinions so that it blows up in the comments because the more comments, the more engagement, the more this post will actually get some more traction and potentially reach a whole audience too. So one thing that you need to know is every time that you hit enter to ChatGPT, there's a sound effect you have to use. It goes a little something like this. All right, so let's see what it comes up with. Here's why I ask for five options for the hook is because the hook is the most important part. If people don't get past sentence one, they won't read sentence two. And so I like to ask for options so that I can kind of choose and maybe I like part of one and then part of another and I can merge them together. And then of course I keep going back and forth with ChatGPT to come up with something like this. Hot take, I want it to be more of something that they're going to respond to. The most underrated funnel killer, no progress bar. Some of y'all are out here holding viewers hostage with your replays. That's funny. No scrub bar, that's not a funnel, it's a felony. We need to talk about VSLs that don't let you fast forward. That's interesting. Okay, so I like those. I wanna make it something that the answer is scrub bars a little bit later. So let me see this. If your VSLs in a scrub bar, I'm not watching it. I said what I said. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna change this. Can you actually make the hook more of like, share your opinion on this? And then the rest of the carousel will go into what my opinion is and can even share part of what I said in the transcript. Include some of the funny jokes or rants or snarky comments that I made in the transcript when my clients and I were kind of laughing about this. All right, let's see what it came up with. Marketers, should your VSL have a scrub bar or not? Some say it kills conversions. Others, me <laughs> with, the, with the emoji, say not having one is basically psychological warfare. Scrub bar equals trust. No scrub bar equals hostage situation. That is exactly what I said in the coaching call too, okay? Let me be blunt. If I can't see how long your video is, I'm not watching it. I'm not focused. I'm anxious. Is it four minutes or 40? I don't know. And now I'm mad at you. <laughs> I once got stuck in a funnel with no scrub bar. It was a gut health video, a good one, but it was 90 minutes long and I didn't know out of front. I felt like I was being held hostage by kombucha. If you think removing the scrub bar increases watch time, ask yourself this. When's the last time you sat through a mystery length VSL and liked it? Exactly. And so see how like I'm just taking a real life conversation and turning it into a post. I've already validated it through a conversation that I had with people that they got heated about it. They wanted to start a conversation about it. I got comments in the DMs that now I'll put into the carousel. So do you see how this like took me seconds? I'm not, oh my gosh, what am I gonna write? And how do I say this? Like I just gave a transcript or I can talk it out to ChatGPT the same way that you saw me do the transcription and it'll help me to make this content. Now I would go over to Canva and I'm gonna choose the carousel templates. For this one, I might put a picture of myself behind it. I'm I might put different pictures for each one. What's really cool is Canva will give you lots of templates that you can use. But again, I just also want to be cautious when I'm creating content that it doesn't look too templated that people start to ignore it. Because when it's not something that is attention worthy and new and novel, people just zone out. So I typed in carousel. And what's great here for these pre-made ones is it'll show me some examples. Like I like that font, that's kind of cool. So some of these are like different pictures for each one. And I've also seen carousels where it's the same picture on everyone. Look at this carousel. It's like the same picture, but different colors. <laughs> 
That's interesting. Okay, so going over here, I'm gonna pick, I actually like this font, so I'm gonna play around with this one as my template and I'm gonna replace it with a picture of me. Or if the caption is, marketers, should your BSL have a scrub bar or not? I'm just gonna like take a selfie of myself, doing a little shrug and look how easy this is. Okay, so I'm doing a few different pictures there. Once I got stuck in a video with no scrub bar, I'm gonna do a little face pop. I think that'll be good enough. So now I just go into my pictures and I'm just gonna upload it to my computer here. What's funny is I have this Leonardo DiCaprio in the background, which you may have noticed already. And um, I leave him there on purpose. Part of it is for that he's just actually decoration in my office. And part of it is engagement. People will ask questions about it. Now for my next trick, go back in here. And uh, this girl's cute, but I'm gonna take her out of my backgrounds but I like the inspiration it's given me already. Like I could leave these cute little things in here. It doesn't really match the aesthetic that I'm going for. So I'm just gonna upload all these pictures. And then once they're uploaded, I'm gonna drag them into carousel posts and I'm gonna edit the caption on top. All right, I'm gonna download it and I'm gonna post it. Look how easy that was. I just looked at my calendar, looked at something happening that week, and then I turned it into this carousel. I could do the exact same thing where I could just go to ChatGPT and talk about something that is topical, or even like if I don't know what to talk about, I would go to ChatGPT and say, Hey, my audience is entrepreneurs and marketers, and I specifically love teaching them about content. I like talking about content pet peeves, things that people are doing right or wrong. Can you give me five ideas for a reel or Instagram carousel post that could tap into some humor and also some pet peeves that other people can comment on and learn about how to do their social media marketing better? Okay, so then I ask that and it'll give me lots of ideas and guess what, I can take all of them or none of them or I can just keep going back and forth until I like it. Look at this one, stop writing like a LinkedIn robot. Absolutely. The beige Instagram epidemic, that's cool. Dear Guru, stop whispering your hooks. Fake urgency is ruining your launch. Stop saying value and actually give some. That's what I could do for my niche. You could just fill in the blanks with yours. Maybe you help stressed out moms. Maybe you help people to get their health back. Maybe you help people that are struggling in their relationships. Just ask ChatGPT. And then you get to go over to Canva and make something fun with it. Whatever you do, keep it fast to read and fast to feel. Your Canva content doesn't have to suck. It just has to feel like a human made it. A human with something to say. And I've got some tools down below to help you with your hooks and some more videos to help you make even more content that makes you even more money.